Happy Whiskey Wednesday, everyone. I'm Robin, and this is Savor at Home number 73. So this past weekend, I was just in Utah. I was in Park City, and you can't go to Park City without visiting High West Distillery. So what I'm trying today is something from High West, of course. This is Campfire. Look at that label, what a cool label. The label was redone and it looks amazing. Anyways, if you have not had Campfire, this is a blend of straight rye whiskey, straight bourbon whiskey, and blended malt scotch whiskey. So this is a blend of three different types of whiskeys. And let's break down what this label actually means. Straight rye whiskey means it must be made from a majority of rye in the mash. It must be aged for a minimum of four years in new charred oak barrels. And it has to be four years because there's no age statement on the bottle. Similarly, straight bourbon whiskey means it must be made in the U.S. from a majority of corn in the mash bill aged for no less than four years in new charred oak barrels. And then at the bottom, blended malt scotch whiskey. So this means it's made from 100% malted barley in the mash bill, made in Scotland, and aged in oak casks for no less than three years. And since it's blended, it means it is made at more than just one distillery. So it's a little bit confusing, um, but it is a blend of all different types of whiskey that goes into this bottle right here. Now, the ratio that they use for the blend is completely top secret. However, while I was at the distillery, I was asking questions and someone tossed out a number. They said about 20% of the scotch goes into the blend. I don't know how accurate that is, but there we go. Some scotch goes into the bottle, <laughs> about 20%, maybe, or maybe not. We don't know. So the straight rye whiskey that goes into Campfire is actually made from ryes made with two different mash bills. One of those comes from MGP in Indiana. It's their classic 95.5 mash bill. That means 95% rye, 5% malted barley. The other rye is distilled by High West. It's their 80% rye, 20% malted rye mash bill. Now, if this combination sounds familiar, it's because that's what they use for both their rendezvous rye and their double rye. Of course, there are different ages, different ratios mixed together, etc., to create various expressions. The bourbon that goes into Campfire is also produced by MGP in Indiana, and the mash bill is 75% corn, 21% rye, and 4% malted barley. So it's a rather high rye mash bill. And finally, the blended malt scotch whiskey that goes into this bottle comes from an undisclosed source. We know it's at least from two different distilleries in Scotland, and we also know that it's peated because there's some smokiness in Campfire, hence the name, right? All of these whiskeys are aged between four and eight years, and they're aged in both new charred American oak barrels and second fill X bourbon barrels. Now we know that the rise and the bourbon that went into this were aged in the new charred American oak barrels because otherwise they wouldn't be straight and the scotch was probably aged in the second fill bourbon barrels. Now you used to be able to find campfire everywhere, or at least I could find it in California. However, as of March, 2021, campfire is only available in Utah. So you just have to go visit the distillery in order to get some campfire. It is sitting at 46% ABV and I am ready to taste it. You wanna hear what this sounds like? It's great. That's a good one. So let's start with the color there. So there is a lot of color 
um, even though there's some young scotch that goes into here, there is a lot of color coming from the rye and the bourbon, and I'd call it a copper color. Immediately on the nose, there's some smokiness, but it's not your classic peat reek that I'd expect from a peated scotch or from some peated scotches. Um, it has a little bit more of like a mesquite character, and I believe that's because the peatiness is working alongside the sweet notes that you'll get in bourbons and some rye. There's also some notes of orange and pine, and I'm getting a little bit of mint and rosemary as well. Yeah, there's a lot of sweet barbecue. It's similar to this coffee barbecue sauce that I get from Trader Joe's. There's also butterscotch and caramel. Ooh, I'm getting some thyme, definitely thyme. And it has just a little bit of fresh asphalt. So for something that's sitting at 46%, I think initially there's a little bit more heat than I would like. Um, it does subside and there is a good creamy viscosity um, for the mouthfeel. And I'm getting a lot more of your quintessential bourbon flavors coming up in the palate, whereas I wasn't really picking those up in the nose. So there's definitely some floral aspects and I'm getting hazelnuts, a little bit of caramel, definitely cloves and cinnamon bark and some like dusty bitter chocolate. But then the smoky characteristics come forward, present themselves more as roastiness and some like wet mulch um, in a good way. <laughs> I think campfire is great. Uh, I think it's a really fun balance and you don't see distilleries blending together bourbon and rye with peated scotch. And I think it's a really, really fun combo. So I definitely recommend checking out campfire, going to Utah, grabbing a bottle. Um, and it's also what you want to sip on while camping for sure. I've done it. It's great. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and share it with friends. And let me know in the comments if you have tried Campfire before or if you're a fan of any other High West products. And before I go, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreons. I really appreciate you guys joining the community, being the start of this community on Patreon and supporting the channel. And if you would also like to support the channel, I will leave the link to my Patreon account down in the description below. They also redid their Rendezvous label and it also looks awesome. I don't know who the artist is, but yeah, the labels look really cool. Their distillery is now a little bit outside in Wanship, which is about a 30 minute drive from Park City. Um, pro tip, if you're ever going to visit High West Distillery, make sure to book travel arrangements, leaving the distillery, going back to where you're staying, either Salt Lake or Park City. Um, Ubers and Lyfts don't like to go up to the distillery. I am a big fan of High West. I've done um, a number of uh, tastings, savor at home tastings. Maybe I'll put some links here uh, for you to check out some of the other videos that I've done of other High West products. I'll do it again. Woo! That's a good sound.